pleased to be. Good morning again for any uh, latecomers, if you just joined us. Um, I, I'm hoping that this will be an interactive session. So I know we're recording and you've got two choices. Uh, you can either ask questions as I go through uh, the various bits and pieces of LinkedIn, or if you prefer not to, for your voice not to be recorded, you can always just type in the chat the question and I will answer it uh, once I finish the part of the presentation that I want to cover. Um, what I've done here is I've opened my own profile through a browser that I haven't logged in, and I hope you can see. This is the feed that I get from LinkedIn. Um, I'm not going to say anything more about LinkedIn at this stage because I want to ask you something uh, in a second. So I'm going to tell you what we're going to cover today. I've got Scotty up there because I thought some colleagues might uh, be looking at this with a skeptical eye. Uh, we've got a lot of work and uh, we've got day is never, <laughs> there's never a briefer. So, um, you know, choosing yet another social media uh, platform, uh, yet another area where we put our profile, where we put our, our uh, pretty much replicate our CV and projects and the work that we've done and who we've worked for uh, can be time consuming. But I'm hoping that when I go through it, you, you'll see time consuming it can be, but also it can be very useful to you, not only for this uh, university, but for any other employer that you might be thinking in the future. The interesting thing to point here is that increasingly recruiters are looking uh, to find your profile on social media, whether you are on LinkedIn or whether you are anywhere else. But LinkedIn in, in particular has become a, a great tool for recruiters. So keep that in mind. So what I'm going to try and cover is where are we uh, all together here in terms of LinkedIn focus? You know, is it, is it in our mind or is it something that we don't really want to think about? Uh, where is LinkedIn in, in data terms? You know, as a platform, uh, it's, like many platforms, it's very, very recent when you think about it. Um, and how has it been doing with the number of users? Uh, where is the technology adoption going? There's been a couple of things happening uh, through COVID that have affected how consumers and users are reacting to the adoption of various platforms. And I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, hopefully throughout this session, I'll talk why should you bother. Um, and then we will go on to the basics of how you build your profile, how you expand your network, uh, and how could you find more information about the more advanced aspects of LinkedIn. So I don't know, uh, your background. So I've got a question for you. If you open a browser and you put pauleve.com forward slash ISP 300, <laughs> that was Leonidas uh, with his 300. I'm sorry, it always happens. So pauleve.com ISP 300. Um, what social media platforms do you use, if any? You know, and uh, what we're going to create together, hopefully, if you're answering this, will be a little word cloud, which uh, the more people put a particular media, social media platform, the bigger the word will get. I will give it a minute to see if you are using any social media platforms. <sighs> We're getting that. Okay, so we've got, this is coming up, Instagram, WhatsApp, LinkedIn, Facebook, WhatsApp. Keep, keep on putting in single words what you're using, and you can see that a lot of people are using. Well, we've got a lot of users of LinkedIn here, so uh, I'm going to invite you uh, in, in the very near future of this session to uh, give us your feedback as well, and we'll have a discussion about the things that work for you. Um, okay, Insta is there in the background, and uh, Facebook is big. Uh, that's great. So I keep them coming as I talk around these different social media platforms. You will notice that there is nobody here who has put Snapchat, and you will notice that Instagram is there very small. Uh, there is academia.edu coming up, and if we were to look at the full list of the social media platforms, we were looking at about 60 different platforms are currently using. Oh, snap, somebody put Snapchat the moment I said it. <laughs> Maybe we have some younger users here, but uh, Instagram and Snapchat tend to be uh, taking the demographic of the young users. Facebook and LinkedIn, uh, tend to take our demographic, well, my demographic, um, I'm, in, I'm in my 40s, 46 to be exact, uh, and we use Facebook and our kids 
are moving away from Facebook into other platforms. But a lot of uh, users, no matter what their generation, seem to be choosing LinkedIn because it's the work of choice or the app of choice when it comes to professional uh, background and, and how do you connect with other, uh, with other people professionally. That's some interesting one. This, this, oh, we've got Tinder there. That's fantastic. Uh, nobody put TikTok, which is great. <laughs> We're not going to talk about that one. So that gives me an idea of uh, your usage on social media. So we have a, a group of people here who, who know their stuff. And I want you to think about LinkedIn in particular now. How LinkedIn are you? Quite often when I talk to, to business people, some of them have never heard of it interestingly enough. Um, okay, majority of people have an okay profile. Let's see if there's anybody else here. Okay, that will help me tweak a little bit and try and talk a, a bit more advanced stuff. An account, but not the time to update. Time is of the essence, and uh, I run about five different social media that take up a lot of time when I try to update them. And I won't lie to you, there are times where I take what I call a sabbatical. So I spend a lot of time uh, when I do have it in updating, but then you know, I took a six-month sabbatical from all social media uh, from March <laughs> until the summer. In the summer, I wasn't allowed to touch any uh, of the social media. Just I, The only thing I was allowed to do during my holidays was fix the garden, and I'm proud of it now. Uh, that, is, that is fantastic. We've got people uh, who know what they're doing, 75%, an OK profile, I just want to update it, and I have an account, and I don't have the time to update. And I want to ask you now, uh, would you consider, before the session, becoming more active on LinkedIn? Simply agree or disagree with a yes or no, or say I've got more important things to do, or none of the above. Okay, so good. Wow, you were unanimous. Um, that's great. You are believers, and that's why you came. Okay, I've got more important things to do. Absolutely. Uh, let's see if this becomes, in terms of your priority, whether, whether this comes a bit higher in your priority list. Now, this is the data from Charles Hardy, a higher education client partner, delivered this session, uh, I believe, around October this year. But the data is from last year from LinkedIn. Now, remember that around October, 2019, LinkedIn had 690 million members, and it was, at the time, the world's largest professional network. And you can see, in terms of various countries, in the UK alone, you can see up here, 28 million and more uh, users of LinkedIn. Why am I showing you these numbers? I'm showing you these numbers because it goes back to the previous question of whether you're considering spending a little bit of time and whether your time will give you rewards. You know, academics will spend time in writing papers because that helps them with the career. Um, colleagues in administration will spend time in some of those deadlines of writing reports or dealing with what you have to deal because that, that brings value to your, to your job. But what about you? How much time do you invest in you? And that's the question I want you to keep in your mind. And this is all about you. It's all about showcasing who you are. It's all about connecting with other professionals, expanding your network, um, even getting information, and more importantly, at some point, getting those uh, job opportunities that there are a lot of good job opportunities that happen through these social networks that wouldn't necessarily happen if you were looking actively externally. I don't want you to go, but at the end of the day, I want you to be happy. <laughs> I don't want you to leave university, right, and for God's sake. But, uh, you know, if you're happy somewhere else, um, connect with me, and then, <laughs> then I'll be happy as well, knowing that you're happy uh, wherever you are. This is also from uh, that uh, presentation that Charles did, but it was mainly focused for students. And with the 690 million members, that gives you an idea of how many millions of jobs were running last year in LinkedIn and how many education providers and, and we'll do a little bit where we go into the University of Brighton profile on LinkedIn and have a look at that and see how you can use that also to your advantage. Now these are today's data, May I say today's, it was October of this year. You can see from 690 million uh, of last year, within a year, you've got another 60 million members. Now LinkedIn has reached maturity stage. So one would expect that is gaining uh, users very slow, but even 
in the last year alone, it picked up 16 million members in 200 countries. And that gives you an idea that it's still growing. You know, it's reaching the early maturity stage, but as a network, as a platform, it will grow. Um, and that means the potential for your network uh, to grow, uh, I wouldn't say limitless, but they are much greater than ever before. It's a joke going that uh, you have, with, with every social media platform, you got to be careful. So you got to judge for yourself how much time you spend, how much information you want to give out. Now, I'm going to trust you and I'm going to show uh, my personal profile from the inside. In the beginning, I showed you what it looked uh, when I haven't logged in. So what it looks to external people. So anybody searches me can find me on LinkedIn. So you got to be careful if you don't want to give too much information. But there are certain things you have to share if you want to be successful in the network. And I will explain what these things are. The thing to remember is that the skill set of everyone, uh, from students to academics to colleagues in admin, are changing fast. I think you, we all have realized uh, the moment we go full on digital, at a moment's notice, uh, there was no more the, the approach of, oh, you know, let's support uh, people to learn. No, people had to learn pretty fast on how to use digital platforms and the choice, the platform of choice, uh, the university's teams, Remember the early days of Teams and how, how fast we all had to learn on creating channels and creating groups and, and, and trying to communicate. It's the same thing with every, every uh, type of software that you try to learn. It's the same thing uh, with social media platforms. The more you put into it, the more value you get out of it. And it does affect uh, your core job skills, which will be different. About a third of your, the skills that you require in your day-to-day -day job uh, will be different next year. And this is what I mean by how they will be different. If you think about how population is, is accepting changes in technology, in the last year alone, you have a huge percentage of population that has accepted technology much, much faster. In, in terms of how much faster, we're looking at the adoption that would normally take three to five years happening in months. So society in itself is changing dramatically when it comes to digital platforms. This is from McKinsey and Company. It's a 2020 report. There's a couple of reports there. Uh, so when you look at that acceleration over three years to four years uh, in Europe, you know we should be at 32 to 33 in, in, in terms of you looking at percentage of acceptance. We're not 55, but you know that means 55% of people are more likely to accept any new technology. You can, you can understand with these numbers what this would do to the adoption of different platforms. And whether we like it or not, uh, with a number of industries, a lot of people are made redundant. So they will turn into these social networks. They have turned into these social networks to try and, and have a backup. So with that in mind, of how society is changing, of how, how our skill sets are changing, um, I don't want you to get too stressed. Oh, i got to have a better LinkedIn profile. I just want you to reflect about it. For those who haven't got an, an account, uh, because we're recording this and, and, and maybe somebody will look at this video, um, it is very easy, like with any uh, platform out there that is successful, they try to make it as intuitive as possible for you to create an account. As long as you have an email or even if you have a Google account, you can even join with a Google account. That's the screen you will face. My recommendation to you is if you are going to ever join this, don't use your professional email, use your personal email because you get enough emails as it is on a day-to-day -day basis with everybody replying on everybody every time an email comes in. The last thing you want is also the LinkedIn updates and any other platform updates. So have a, a, a specific email that you create for your social media accounts that you can use. Just, just a little bit tip there. So we're going to visit my profile and these are the nine things um, I'm going to try and talk to you about. I said there will be things that you want to consider having. For example, let's uh, think very quickly how a lot of you here have a LinkedIn profile and I will tell you a very quick uh, tip on how you can increase your network, okay, which is number six of expanding your, your network. So the hot tip there is ISP, that's me, Ioannis Savas Pantelidis, and the PL is uh, Paul, and you know Paul, and uh, if you connect with Paul, uh, who opens up the Mithras canteen every morning, uh, which is great, and we can have nice conversations there. Uh, he's got 
thousand followers. The moment you connect with Paul, those 7.5 thousand followers become a second degree connection to you. You can connect with me. I've got uh, just over 2,000 followers. You know, two and seven and a half, that's nine and a half followers already become part of your extended network. At level two, at level two on LinkedIn means you can actually invite them to become level one with a simple, with a free account. You do not need to pay any money uh, because LinkedIn will keep on pushing uh, when you are a member and saying, oh, you know, upgrade for a free for a month because you can get all these extras. You don't really need them. Oh, no, let's uh, stop there and I will go on to my profile. So I'll remind you what my profile looks for somebody who's searching me. And you can see, we'll, we'll do a little review without me logging in. And you've got my picture, which is extremely important. If you send me an invite for me to connect with you and you don't have a picture, I will reject it. Why? It has to do with trust issues. When I say me, I mean anybody on LinkedIn. Some people have an open policy where they accept anybody that connects. Other people are very strict and they will only connect with you if they've worked with you. Um, but the things they will look for is whether you've got some basic stuff about your profile. And if you've got a picture, then they can sort of connect mentally and trust you. Now, of course, there are a lot of hackers out there that make fake profiles in various platforms. Uh, and you've got to be, watch out for them. But this, this, this little thing here means trust. The other thing you might want to look at is your banner. And the banner, normally, if you can see what I've done here, is I've kept the original banner uh, that LinkedIn gives you. And uh, when you go onto your, uh, if you haven't changed your banner, when you go into your LinkedIn profile, you'll see this long picture. You can actually copy that long picture and edit it. That's what I did. And what I've done is I've added in the background as transparencies. I made a little word cloud about the things I teach, research, enjoy reading about. And I put it there. It kind of comes out of my head, the stuff that I think about. Um, and then I put a couple of logos of the organizations I work for. I mean, I'm chair of Jimmy, so that's important to me. And I also worked for University of Brighton. That's also important for me and for people who see uh, my profile and maybe want to connect with me. And if we scroll down, you see the stuff about me. Uh, I've got stuff that are articles that are featured. Um, and I tend to give advice on my YouTube channel to students, PhDs. Um, and I put that there as feature content, and I'll explain how you can do that for yourself as well. I've got activities there. I've got the uh, work experience that is coming up, and I've got any other stuff I want to add, like I'm on the editorial boards of academic journals. I add it up there. Um, then if you scroll the way down, uh, you can see my volunteer experience when I've been a trustee of some of the charities I've worked with. And then at the very bottom, you will see somewhere at the very bottom. <laughs> okay, my profile is a bit too long. Uh, sorry about that. There it is. Now, what LinkedIn does with the people you connect, people will ask you for recommendations. And quite often, when you give them a recommendation, they give you one back as a kind of thing. And often I get students asking me, but also I have colleagues who have recommended me on LinkedIn. They write something about what they thought about my teaching here. Uh, our colleagues have wrote how uh, we work together, and, and you get to review this, so you don't accept somebody says, don't talk to Yanis, he's a bad man. I wouldn't accept that, but you know, um, luckily so far I didn't have to reject any any uh, recommendations. I've got about uh, 21 recommendations, and, and I try to make sure that every time somebody's asking me to recommend them, um, that's only people I know and I've worked with. And I give them a nice recommendation if I believe they deserve it, right? Uh, I've had requests for recommendation from people that haven't responded. And that is your choice. And we'll come back to that. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to close that. And I'm going to bring, uh, if I bring this down here, I'm going to bring up a different. Uh, and there is, there is Paul. Paul is uh, sending me messages. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. One of the things I was trying not to do, and thank God it wasn't a different message, is I'm trying not to do the personal stuff. Like when I have messages, I won't open that because I don't want to betray the trust of other people who are sending me private messages. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can change things like the banner. When you go into your uh, profile or when you go to your account, if you can't find your profile, it's very easy. You will see a little... If you don't have a picture, you'll see a little circle here next to your notifications. If you click that, 
you can go and view profile as an external or you can go to your profile simply by clicking there and normally it will bring you uh, right right here where you can see these little pens pencils so if i click on that one i can adjust my banner i can save a picture what i did is if you don't use photoshop uh, you can easily use powerpoint and with powerpoint you can group different pictures together and you can right click and save them as a picture on your desktop and you can upload it uh, by changing the photo and then you apply you always have to click apply for this to refresh and show in your profile and it was a very simple powerpoint job if you have photoshop skills you can do wonders with with banners what about the picture yannings well i guess i'm lucky because uh, i get asked because i'm so famous <laughs> I'm kidding. I am like a couple of times. Um, I think the university photographer wanted to have an updated photo, and if you ask permission, they, they allow you to uh, use some of those photos for other social media. A lot of the work that I do finds its way back to University of Brighton anyway. So uh, this is for the benefit of the university, me using a picture that looks semi okay. Well, it's a professional picture. The picture looks great. What looks semi okay is the content. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> uh, so what, I, what I've done is here, if you are an academic, uh, just remember that different people react differently to what they see about your name. And, and if you're an administrator also, and you have a PhD, you have a master's, you have, a, have an undergraduate, whatever, whatever you are, if you've got some membership, if you've got some degree, this is the place to put it, okay? Because you have different cultures. And uh, you know, to my family, my friends, I'm just Yanis, um, but to my, the people that look see me externally, the PhD is important to them because uh, they think, oh, doctor, you know, I cannot cure your broken arm, but I can philosophize about it. It's not real pain. Uh, but, but the other stuff are meaningful to people. If they work in hospitality, they see I'm a fellow. Um, if, they, if they know anything about the higher education, then they see I'm a senior fellow. That So to them, it means something. So when I post content, then they look at it with different eyes. And uh, believe you me, a few years back, if you asked me, I, I was very naive and I thought that didn't matter. But I'm telling you now, what you put after your name matters to a lot of people out there, so use it. And after all, you've, you've spent years you know, doing your degrees and your masters and what have you, and just put it there. Um, just don't overdo it. For example, I've seen some academics that say doctor, or in Germany they do this, Professor Doctor Ioannis Savasvatelis, PhD. Yeah, look up on where is the on Wikipedia the decorum of what you put. You either put PhD or you put Doctor. Choose one. Uh, putting too much, then then people start taking the piece. Uh, now the other section you want to fix after the banner and the photo is about you. Now about you, there are two ways of doing it. One way is you can write it as if you're talking. You can make it. You know, if I click on this. Uh, it's how I edit it. For me, the about me, the way I've chosen is I hate the third person when I'm asked on paper and I have to use the third person in, in, in business uh, journals uh, quite often. And But then you hate it and here you're saying, Dr. Pantelidis has done that, he's chair of whatever. I use the third person because to me it's like as if when I go to a conference and somebody's introducing me, they use the third person and they're the people that will make me look good. Okay, and then I go in and I'm like Yanis and I do my thing. Um, and in the same way here, the way I think, and it's up to you how to think, is in the third person, when somebody first looks the about me, uh, they think, oh, and I, I get people from the island that say, oh, you've done so much. And I'm like, well, okay, whatever. Um, people see uh, your about as if somebody else talked about you. And it's quite good in order uh, for people to see your background, your uh, history, your employment history, the stuff that you've done, the stuff that really matters to you for your professional uh, background. Now, up here, you can add all this. I didn't, before I started, only, the only thing that probably you will find is the about, where you can edit with a pencil. Right here, you've got add profile section, and I've added a number of things for me. You don't have to add all of this, but I'll tell you the stuff that really works. Uh, now, my uh, the point of my LinkedIn is for me right now. I'm not looking for a job, right? So I right here when you when you go on to more, you can even switch on to recruiters for them to see your profile, uh, and and they will start sending you potential jobs that match your profile. I've got that off myself, but in your case, 
who knows? Maybe you, you want the next uh, experience and you might want to switch that on. My point of LinkedIn is I want to connect and I want to share my message. Part of my message, for example, is some of the uh, sessions I do about uh, the context of where I research and where I share information. Other with my heart as doctoral uh, colleague director, where I've got uh, here, for example, I've got advice for potential PhD people. You know, if they're looking for a PhD, what they shouldn't do before they, they go for the interview. Um, right here, I've got for my undergraduate students, I teach research methods. I've uploaded videos about, you know, the different stages of the dissertation and, and how you could um, approach it. So for me, those featured uh, content means that I get more traffic from my LinkedIn into my YouTube channel. OK, and that's important to me. Uh, and this is private to me. That's my dashboard. This is my most recent uh, data, about 239 people. I think this is weekly, if I remember correctly, viewed my profile. Uh, 585 people have seen different things I've posted and I've appeared in 52 different searches. Now, if you think about it, I've got a very weird name, Ioannis S. Pandelidis. So people to find me by name, very difficult if they don't know me, but they use keywords that are in my content and they find me. So I must be appearing somewhere um, and I will show you the University of Brighton and see how, how I appear. My activity. When I am on, if I click home there, and let me, let me right click and open it in a new tab. What you can do with LinkedIn is, I can start a post, same as Facebook, same as any other, and I'm sure you've used it. When you start a post, the thing I, I, I'm going to remind you is, it's nobody cares. There's so much content out there, guys. It's like, why should I care and go and read what Yanni says? So how do we make them care? The thing is, if you see here, I've got hospitality stories, right? And every hospitality story, I get a guest speaker, which are for my students. Now, when I go and post, like every Monday, I release a video. I tag the person that's in the video. Now, he then or she will then go and talk about it. And they, they're happy because you know the feature on the video and then their network gets the information as well so tag people tag companies if you tag university of brighton have a look at how many times uh, our glorious leader responds to students that get there which i think is great actually and i'm not sure if she has a team behind her where they go like the moment you see university of brighton tag you get the response bam well done for getting your degree i think that's Either she spends you know, 4 a.m. to 5 a.m. responding individually to each one, or she has a team behind this. I don't know. Um, but if you tag University of Brighton, uh, you probably will get far more in your network. If you tag, I don't know, if you talk about a particular restaurant, you tag that restaurant, maybe you had a meal there, and you put it there. I found that LinkedIn is becoming a little bit more like uh, Facebook in, some, in, in the later year or two in terms of what people are posting. Uh, I don't like that. I would have liked LinkedIn to stay purely professional, but you know, other people enjoy it. Um, so remember, when you post, tag somebody, tag Paul. He's got 7,000, <laughs> Paul is going to get tagged all the time. <laughs> He's got 7,000 plus followers. So his network is going to be seeing what you're posting. Think of your keywords and think of your hashtags. If you don't know how, what hashtags are, when you go there, um, you do this and then you say, uh, what is the hashtag that a lot of hashtags that I use again, I get come up. So academic. And when you comprise a posting, put the hashtag. So people who are interested for that particular keyword will find about your posting. Okay. I want to discard that. I don't want to just post something with a hashtag. Here's my personal experience, which you can edit and you can add. And the more you add, the more trustworthy you become, the more of a complete profile on LinkedIn you have, the more trustworthy you become. I didn't build this overnight. And uh, like you, I started with an OK profile and uh, very slowly built it up. But then I realized the value of such a tool. Um, and, you know, the recommendations didn't come overnight. I think I've been linked in LinkedIn from the very early uh, stages. So every year, maybe I get one or two um, uh, recommendations. So let's do this other thing. Let's go back to home. To do, come on, and we'll search University of Brighton. And the beauty of this is, you know, you're building your profile, and you're thinking, you know, I don't have time to to burn. Um, 
I want to increase my network swiftly, Yanis. Give me the tips. Tell me how. Well, look what you can do. You can go into company's profile, and University of Brighton has its own profile. And look at that. 1,679 class alumni are right there, ready for you to connect. Okay, and, and what you can do is you can you can click and you can look at the alumni and where they are. Uh, let's have a look where they live. You can go next. Each one of these is actually searchable. Okay, so we've got 24 alumni who work for our university. If I go here, what do they do? If you are in a particular industry, you can go there and you can connect with them. Uh, what they study, what they skilled at, uh, how are you connected? Third level of connection, second level of connection, or first? Yeah. I'm only connected with four alumni. I gotta fix that. <laughs> so I don't know why that's the case. I thought I was connected with more. Um, here it gives me suggestions of who I should connect with. I'll come back to that one. <laughs> but you get a lot of, of, uh, of suggestions of who to connect with. And if you scroll down, you keep on getting. And of course, I won't, I'm not going to connect with somebody who I've never taught or they're in a you know, low with business. I know the business bit, I don't know the low, so I'm not going to connect with people I haven't taught or I don't understand their background. Or, you know, you just be reasonable. Uh, if you go into jobs, there are no jobs right now. You see, that's a little thing that the, our university is missing out. Any jobs that they're advertised on our, on our university website, external jobs, I think should be advertised right here. Maybe there are on by the way, and maybe they're only internal jobs, but you could also advertise uh, internal jobs here if you wanted. And this is all about the university and the locations and where it is. And you can even visit the website. Um, if I go back to home, it should show. It loads a bit slowly because I'm streaming, but you should be seeing activity from various people of the university. Uh, this is just their posts. It was doing it yesterday, but today, and actually I could see uh, Nic Nicola from the university. I could see Paul was having activities. I could see who is the most active person. Uh, and that kind of gives you a snapshot, and I probably have uh, missed a lot of the stuff, but let me see what I said I would cover. Uh, picture and banners, we did it. Edited sections, we did it. Asking for reviews, we talked about it. Ah, creating content. Um, we talked about postings, but creating content is all about creating meaningful content that you want to share. Don't just start posting stuff that you know, are only relevant to you and maybe one or two others. Think of the stuff that are really important. If you, if you created a paper, a white paper, you wrote a report, you were part of a project, uh, write it and connect the, the individuals on the team. That's great content. And the moment you connect the individuals, that content spreads uh, to those teams. So let me present this again. Harnessing the University of Brighton Network with date. The tip about linking, uh, hooking up with Paul and uh, myself and anyone else you know has a big network, connect with them now. Uh, every meeting and conference you attend, every single meeting is an opportunity to expand your network. What people think, and I used to think this, is, but I work with you every day, Yanis. Why should I connect with you? We connect every day. We, well, and not anymore. We have a digital coffee now. But I used to not think to connect with the people I work closely with. Connect with them. You're helping them connect with your students. You're helping them. You're helping yourself. Connect all your business social media. Uh, I had to make the decision about how I use Instagram and Facebook. You will not see pictures of my kids on my Facebook. You will not see a single picture of maybe this. I lost one of my wife. Uh, she will kill me by posting <laughs> of my wife and my kids. And that's a you know that's a conscious choice that my social media are. A little bit fun and a bit of humor and a little bit about the stuff that I do, gardening and fixing stuff and flowers and birds when I when I do a bit of, I don't do bear watching, but I, I do take photos of them, um, you know, to show my human, my human side. But a lot of the other, 90% of it is all about the stuff that I do, the stuff that I teach, the stuff. And that's a personal choice. You can separate your Facebook and only connect to friends. The problem for me as an academic is I was getting too many requests from, from students, ex-students, and I didn't want to, the, the, to miss the opportunity of connecting with my alumni and people I taught because, you know, they become the leaders of the future and, and they bring a lot of value. So I decided that years ago, you know, I'll focus on business on any of my profiles. So 
still no. I think I should spend some time setting up or improving my LinkedIn profile after all this. Uh, have you changed your mind? Uh, yes or no? What can I do for you? What can I not do for you? Was that a waste of time? Okay, slightly changing. <laughs> Thank God for that. Uh, okay, I'm not going to have a heart attack. It's getting better. You can be kind to me. You can lie. <laughs> People are changing. Changing their no. You are very kind. Thank you. Um, when do I edit my LinkedIn profile on my social media? I do not do anything on my social media first thing in the morning. It's my most creative time. I tend to spend uh, my creative time writing or creating projects. I will spend time on fixing social media and catching up at my dead times. When I'm tired, when I can't read a report, that's my dead time. Um, I will use my dead time for that sort of stuff. Think of it as habitual. And also watch the social dilemma, by the way, uh, because you've got to be careful not to get hooked on that stuff. Further help. If you are building a small business, I could be talking for a whole day about LinkedIn is going to enhance your brand and will bring you customers. Uh, so think about it. Maybe you have a small business on the side. Maybe you work as part-time in the university and you want to build up uh, your other part-time little business. If you want to find more advanced features, there are some really nice one-minute sessions. So if you click on the bottom link, uh, quick tips to do more with LinkedIn. You know, how you connect with recruiters, how you can do extra stuff, how you can advance your features. Uh, Etc. So this is great uh, tips and they're only one minute long so you can watch one and leave it and then when you have a break and you have a coffee you can watch another one which is another minute long so they're great. Session, I apologize for tiring you. We do have 20 minutes where if you want I will ask, I will answer the questions you had in the chat. I could hear things happening in the chat. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll ask your questions and then if you want, uh, you can experiment for the 20 minutes with stuff uh, on your LinkedIn and you can ask questions about things that didn't work yet. So I'm lost, what am I doing? And we'll go, Paul, I think, if Paul is still here, he can answer stuff. Okay, great. Well, thank you. Who is Scotty? <laughs> Find me later. 